Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, and some benchmarks on this video card, the one in the middle. This is the HIS Radeon HD 7970 Ice Q X2. And the reason I have three video cards out here in front of me is because I wanted to give you guys a quick explanation of the difference between them. Because especially when we're talking about really high-end video cards, a lot of times vendors will come out with different versions. Uh, we've looked at a couple of these already. Uh, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video as well where I show all three in the same video and do some little cro Crossfire X demonstration as well as demonstrating uh, the HIS uh, software that they've included to help you do overclocks. But first off, we have the 7970X right here. This one, as well as this one, are both based on the Tahiti XT2 GPU. That's the 7970 gigahertz edition. This one here on the right is kind of the base model for the 7970. That's based on the Tahiti XT. So uh, both of these here are going to feature a, a, a 1050 megahertz uh, GPU core clock speed with an 1100 megahertz boost. The 7970X is kind of their top of the range one. So this one uh, is going to have a more cherry-picked GPU. It's probably going to have some more overclocking potential. They've done some more work with the PCB and the power delivery for this one. So if you want the best of the best, go with the 7970X. They all have the same cooler and they all look roughly the same. Today we're looking at this one, and then uh, also if you want to start off with kind of a baseline, we also have the uh, Radeon HD 7970 uh, non-gigahertz edi edition right there. But this one that we're looking at today, now that I've given my explanation, model number is H797QMC3G2M. That said, let's take a closer look at the box. So apart from the gigahertz edition Tahiti XT2 GPU that's integrated into this video card, of course we have some other technologies. The IceQ X2 cooler, uh, by virtue of its cooling abilities, is going to help this card run on average 70 degrees Celsius cooler and 15 decibels quieter, and that's as compared to the reference design 7970 from AMD. Uh, down here at the bottom we also have some logos and other things to show you, so premium customer support provided by HIS. If you need to contact them, you can. Uh, AMD Radeon HD Graphics, of course, the uh, 7970 is capable of PCI Express Gen 3 support. It's also backwards compatible Gen 2, so don't worry if you're not uh, on a newer motherboard. Uh, you get a 3 gigabyte frame buffer, so that's 3 gigabytes or 3072 megabytes of GDDR5 memory. It's on a 384-bit bus. It runs along at 1500 megahertz, that's 6000 megahertz effective since it's quad pumped data on GDDR5 memory. Uh, also 288 gigabytes per second total memory bandwidth. You get support for 4K and 2K resolu uh, resolutions, quad HD uh, via the display port uh, outputs on the back. Uh, also HDMI out as well uh, if you want to combine your video and sound in one convenient interface. Uh, and then you also get the iTurbo software from HIS. So you can use this to automatically overclock the card. Uh, in a separate video, we're going to be taking a closer look at that software in particular. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. There's a list of what's in the box if you want to take a closer look. Here on the back, uh, some more features. Uh, the 7970 Tahiti X-T2 is based on the GCN architecture. It's 28 nanometer manufacturing process from AMD. Uh, there's five heat pipes in the in the Ice QX2 cooler. Uh, six six Dynamic phase control for PWM, control for the uh, ICs on the board, that's for power delivery, uh, solid state capacitors, solid state chokes. Uh, you do get Ifinity support for up to six monitors from this uh, single video card. However, uh, you can do four monitors right out of the box. Uh, you will need some display port daisy chaining hardware to go along if you do want to connect up to six monitors all at once. Also a list of features there if you guys want to take a closer look. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the box and uh, get on with accessories. Apart from our closed cell foam packaging, which they've included here to keep the video card nice and safe in transport, there it is. Uh, we'll come back to the video card itself after we've gone over the included accessories. Uh, first off, bear in mind this card has a aftermarket custom cooler. It's a large card. It's a little bit on the heavy side, so bear in mind if you are going to be transporting it, make sure you secure it properly. Never, ever ship a computer, a built computer, especially one with a heavy video card in it, without added support or without removing the card and shipping it separately because that's a really easy way to damage a card and make sure it won't work when it arrives to wherever you're shipping it. Uh, other accessories here, we have a DVI to VGA adapter, which we find everywhere. Uh, I recommend not using this. You should probably be using a full uh, digital display solution if you're going with a card of this caliber. However, I should say the caveat that last... Uh, Last time I really needed one of those adapters and I didn't have one, but um, so it goes. 
Uh, here's your uh, included software and driver disk. Uh, chances are there's an updated version of the software and the drivers available either from HIS or from the AMD websites. So go, that, go there to download them. Uh, in particular, the uh, Catalyst 12.11 beta drivers are out, and that's what I'm going to be running the benchmarks uh, with this card for. So that's what you'll be looking at in just a second. Also, a little installation guide here for installing the card. You can also take a look at our How to Build a Computer video if you want some more details on that. HIS Power Up Case Badge Sticker, if you're into the Case Badge Stickers. Uh, they've also included a separate disc here uh, with, what is this? This is the iTurbo. Okay, so I believe in here is the drivers and here is the iTurbo. In either case, go to the HIS website and see if they have an updated version to make sure you're running the latest and greatest. But there you have, you can install off of the disc if you want to. Then finally, as this card does have Crossfire X support, you can run multiple cards in the same uh, solution. It's a two-slot card, so you can go uh, two-way, three-way, or four-way Crossfire X. They've included a Crossfire bridge to help you get that set up. And here's a closer look at the video card itself. I'm going to start off with a measurement because we should always make sure we have room in our cases for the video cards that we buy. This one is measuring in at about 11 and 3 quarters inches. Uh, that's measured from the PCI bracket itself. Make sure you've got room. This is a fairly long card, although I have seen longer cards than this. And the extra length in the end is primarily due to the protrusion of the shroud that's protecting the aluminum fins as well as the fans. So let's talk about the cooler first of all, since this is a custom design cooler by HIS. It's the IceQ X2 cooler. Uh, they've done a good job of both keeping this in a, a reasonable size, because you'll notice this is just a two-slot card, despite its overclockedness as well as its cooling efficiency. Uh, we've got two 85-millimeter fans. Those are both, both going to be downward firing or firing towards the card itself. And then if you look from the side here, the aluminum part that you can see extending the entire length of the card. Really uh, just a lot of thermal mass going on in that aluminum heat sink. Let me give you a look at it from the other side there. And uh, basically you got the heat pipes. They're going to be pulling uh, heat from the GPU as well as other uh, heat genera generating components, distributing it, distributing it amongst the aluminum fins that you can see there beneath the fans, and then the fans are going to be pushing air down over those. Uh, since this is sort of an open design, you're going to have some air exhausting within your case, so bear that in mind. Make sure you have plenty of airflow to keep that air moving through and out of the case as it is generated and dispersed from the card. Uh, apart from the aluminum fins and the fans, we of course have five heat pipes, so uh, you have three smaller heat pipes, which I believe are six millimeter, a uh, couple there. You have a, a fatter eight millimeter heat pipe there, also protruding down here towards the end of the card. A couple more on the opposite side over here, another fatter eight millimeter and a six millimeter right there. Uh, so again, those are just going to be helping move the heat to areas where it can be more easily dispersed. Now, uh, we also have some added support for the cart, so you'll notice this black piece going all the way down the end, end right there. Uh, that's providing some extra rigidity. You can actually see it on both sides of the card. So again, over here, uh, what I would like is that they've actually taken this uh, extra support beam, gone right up to the PCI bracket, and that's where your card's going to get the most support from the actual slot where it's attached to your computer. Uh, it's actually bolted in right there, so that's going to help prevent the card from drooping, give it a bit of extra support. And uh, generally speaking, uh, especially if you're running multiple cards, just keep them so they're sitting nice and pretty and separated from each other so they, they can get air moving over them. Looking at it from this side, this is kind of the view that you will most likely be seeing if you're installed in most case configurations. Uh, so you'll get a nice look at some of the heat pipes as well as an HIS logo right over there. You also notice looking from this side that you've got your power requirements and uh, this is a very fairly beefy card. So uh, as opposed to the 7970 non-gigahertz edition, we actually have two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. Uh, so that's 150 watts per connector plus 75 watts uh, from the uh, PCI Express bus. That's a total of 375 watts possible TDP for the card. Um, although, bear in mind, it's, it's generally not going to be drawing that much. In my tests, it was pulling about 300, and that's for the entire system, not just this video card, and that was under full load. Uh, flipping around here to the back, quick look at the PCB. You'll notice a retention bracket right there, the X pattern, and that's where the GPU resides, right on the other side of that. PCB is sort of a darker, kind of a turquoise blue color. You, of course, have your PCI Express connector right up there at the top. Again, physically the same for PCI Express Gen 2 and Gen 3, uh, as well as Gen 1, by the way, but I would not recommend plugging this into a Gen 1 PCI Express bus. But if you're running Gen 2, 2.1 or 3, uh, you should be fine. Plugs in just like that. And then, of course, down here you've got a couple Crossfire X fingers. Again, if you're going to be running Crossfire X, just make sure you have a fairly uh, decent length of cable there. 
Uh, the one they've actually provided is more of a triple slot. And that's so even if you've got these cards uh, set up in uh, right next to each other, you can go over that heat sink to connect your Crossfire X connectors. And lastly, before we move on to the uh, benchmarks, of course, we have uh, the PCI bracket down here at the back. Uh, so from here, you have two mini DisplayPort connectors. So bear in mind, you might want to grab an adapter if you don't have mini DisplayPort adapters handy. Uh, DisplayPort to standard size DisplayPort works just fine. You also have the HDMI connector right there, as well as dual link DVI out, and uh, that can push 2560 by 1600 resolution. I also have a reference design, AMD Radeon HD 79.7 here. So this is the design straight from AMD, so if you're going with an out-of-the-box experience, that's the type of card you'll be looking at. This one has a shroud-style cooler and uh, integrated blower fan right there, but you notice that uh, height-wise, you get an extra probably an inch to an inch and a half of height by way of the cooler as well as the heat pipes protruding there at the top. And as far as the length goes, it's actually only about an inch longer uh, than the reference card. Uh, apart from that, if I flip this over to look at the PCB itself and kind of give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison there, uh, you will notice that HIS has done some custom work with the PCB. Uh, again, that's to provide some extra power delivery. And uh, also, I already mentioned the power requirements for this one, the, being the two 8-pin power connectors versus the reference one here, which is an 8-pin and a 6-pin. And uh, again, you can do Ifinity directly from this card. Uh, supports up to six monitors from a single card, but you will need the DisplayPort daisy chaining hardware to go along with that. Uh, finally, a couple last notes about the GPU again. Tahiti XT2 GPU in this one, uh, and it runs at 1100 megahertz. That's the boost clock. Uh, the base clock is going to be 1050, uh, but typically speaking, as long as you, the card is not uh, getting too hot, as long as you have plenty of airflow, it's going to run at 1100. It's also got 32 ROPs, 2048 shader units, uh, PCI Express Gen 3, as previously mentioned, and DirectX 11.1 support. From there, we're going to jump over and start taking a look at some of our benchmarks. We're running on a Z77 platform. Uh, we're running on an ASUS Maximus 5 Gene motherboard. Uh, we have uh, some G-Skill memory running along at 2666 speed. We're testing on Windows 7 64-bit, and uh, we ran our typical slew of benchmarks. I'm going to be showing you some comparison numbers in there as well. That said, here you go. So those are our benchmarks. I'd like to say that the uh, IceQ X2 cooler that the HIS has integrated works very well. The hottest temperature I saw in any of my benchmarks was 66 degrees Celsius. Also earlier I was mentioning the uh, power requirements for this card. I mentioned that you do need two uh, PCI Express 8-pin power connectors. HIS is recommending that you run with a 500 watt or greater power supply for the card as well as your entire system. And I would definitely recommend going with a higher wattage than that, especially if you're going to be adding extra peripherals or if you ever want to go with a Crossfire X solution in the future. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the HIS Radeon HD 7970 Gigahertz Edition Ice Q X2. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.